Hey, it's Jared. Today I'm going to talk about having spent over a year hosting all of my online video courses using WordPress. Now there's a variety of different plugins that I've used to pull this off and we're going to go through some of that in this video. The reason that I'm making it is because over the many years that I have had courses available online, I've utilized different platforms and I've even used WordPress before in the past, but I switched away because there were inconsistencies in the student experience that I just wasn't happy with. But I ended up coming back to WordPress because there are enough tools and features these days that really make it the best platform for somebody who wants total control over the student experience from the e-commerce side to the student experience of taking the actual courses and those individual lessons. So what we're looking at is my website. It's a very simple WordPress website, and I'm using Elementor as the page builder, which makes it very easy for me to lay out pages and display my courses. Now, if I go into my main course page, there's a fantastic layout here of all of the courses. I can see all the courses that are available, and I can also see the courses that I have access to. So your users would be able to choose between all courses or the courses that they have access to. We also have a progress bar and last activity showing on all of these as well, which is really great. Makes it easy for your students to see where they're at and remember where they left off. This section is also sortable by alphabetical, newly created, or my progress, and we can also categorize, sort by instructors, and change the view type to a list view as well. I feel like this is a great experience for showcasing the available courses. Now the My Account section I created using Elementor and it has a dashboard from WooCommerce and then it also has the courses that I'm subscribed to. This is the page that students would see immediately after they log in. So they can see their account information and they can get access to their courses really easily. Now the course page layout is really great. I mean, it's a nice looking page, very easy to start and jump into the course. There would be course details right here, like how many lessons. There's other information that you can show there, such as how many students have taken the course. Of course, it shows you that progress and last activity here as well. You can build out this page either just using the typical WordPress page builder, or you can use the Elementor page builder as well to add all of your course information. And then of course, down below are all of the different course videos and lessons that are included. On a course page, we have access to all the different lessons over on the left, and then we have the lesson in the middle with the video and any text or images that we added here. One of the reasons that I decided to go back to WordPress was the ability to customize these pages. Now, this isn't a very good example of a highly customized lesson page, but WordPress pages are highly customizable. And if you use something like Elementor, you can highly customize these pages and provide an excellent student experience for each of your individual lessons. Now, my video here is actually through VideoPress. VideoPress is a video hosting service available from WordPress and Jetpack. And I've had okay experiences with that so far. I'll talk about that a little bit more here in a moment. So the videos typically load pretty quickly. You can switch between different quality levels here as well. And there's also playback speed and you can go full screen with it and adjust other things like your volume and all that good stuff. Like I said, I've had a pretty decent experience with video press, but I'm gonna save my frustrations for the end of the video. Now on the back end of WordPress, we have widgets for WooCommerce, and then we also have widgets for LearnDash as well. So we can see how many students our course has, we can also see how much money our, our website has made over the last 30 days, information like that. Jetpack stats, which shows me how many visits to my website over time. And so it's good information just to have at a glance on the back end of your website. Now, if we go into LearnDash LMS, this is where I spend most of my time managing my courses, making changes to those courses. We're gonna take a look at the Fundamentals of Photography course. We'll go into the Builder. And what's unique about this course is that I actually released this course one week at a time for 30 weeks. And so over the last 30 weeks, every Monday, a new course video has come out. And what's great about LearnDash is it gives you the ability to drip your content out in multiple ways. I just happen to choose uh, from the calendar every Monday, I'm gonna go ahead and release a new video. So the course builder, it's very easy just to move your videos around like you would anything else, drag and drop, changing the title by hitting the little pen icon. And then we can go in and edit 
our individual course lessons as well. So let's take a look at editing one of those lessons because if you're familiar with the standard WordPress page builder, we can throw a video in here. So I used VideoPress for that. What's great about VideoPress really is that it's just a WordPress block. And when you upload your video to it, rather than it storing that video on your server, it's uploading it to WordPress's VideoPress servers, which makes that video very quick to load and also means that you're not gonna bog down your server with all of your large video files. Now, I also added blocks down below for headings and text and added a resource image as well. And if I wanted to, I could enable Elementor within these Learn Dash pages and build out these pages to have a really nice design to them. Now under the settings tab, here's where you can add in uh, lesson materials, show video progression, assignment uploads, and you can also schedule the lesson release date, which is what I did here. Now back to the course builder, if we go into settings, here's where we can apply our price for our course and the checkout link for it as well. And so this would be the link to your WooCommerce product, and we'll look at my my WooCommerce here in a second. You can choose whether this course has prerequisites, like do you have to complete another course before taking this one? You can assign course points that can be used to purchase additional content on your website should you have those features enabled. You can expire the course after a certain date. You can add a start date and an end date to it as well, set a student limit, and you can also apply course certificates to it as well. It's very easy to create a basic course certificate template and then apply that to your website so that when people complete your course, they get a downloadable certificate that they can keep as part of their achievement. Jumping over into WooCommerce, this is where we would set up our individual product. And so if I go and edit my product, you can see here that I have some basic information about that product and which courses it is linked to. So looking at the back end of WooCommerce, we're looking at a course specifically here. This is where you would give it a title. You would give a brief description, a price. You can even apply a sale price with a schedule. So that would expire after a certain amount of time. And then you link up the course to the specific product. And so the process works as this. They go to your website, they purchase a product. So they're purchasing a product through WooCommerce. And then with that purchase, it unlocks the course for them and gives them access to the course. And this is all automated. Now for my payments, I'm using WooCommerce Payments, which essentially connects to Stripe. And that means that every purchase that's made, I get paid out the next day for that through my Stripe account. Now, one of the other reasons that I wanted to host my own website was so that I could take more control over my email marketing. I use Klaviyo for my email marketing. And what I love about Klaviyo is how easy it is to set up email marketing automation. For example, if somebody comes to my website and they start the checkout process, they add a course to cart and they don't check out. They will then receive an email about an hour later reminding them that they left something in the cart. And if they don't check out, they'll get another email from me 10 hours later. Now through those emails, about one in five people end up coming back and purchasing that course. I don't know what got in their way from checking out in the first place, but I know that those automated emails are paying for themselves. Klaviyo also gives me the ability to segment all of my students based on which course they're taking and how active they've been on my site. If I have a student of a specific course who hasn't been active on the site in a certain amount of time, I can automate an email to send to that student to follow up with them. Now I know a lot of other platforms have this ability, but the problem with those platforms is that they're built into the LMS and that means that you can't do anything external from that. So if I wanted to start a newsletter, if I wanted to start something external from my website, it's very hard to do that. And that's why I decided to use Klaviyo because it integrates with WooCommerce and all of the WooCommerce data goes into Klaviyo and I'm able to sort and parse that data there so that I can automate emails that make sense for those students. So having been using this website for over a year, close to a year and a half, I have some pros and cons. First of all, the pros have been being able to control the student experience, being able to set up the pages how I want, add the resources and information to those pages that I want because I know I'm using something tried and true like the WordPress page builder. It's also easy for me to edit the rest of my website. Most of the all-in-one services out there allow you to build out your website, but those features are fairly limited and you really have to know how to write code in order to update those websites. These days, I don't have the time for that. I want something simple. It's easy for me to make changes and WordPress with Elementor is the best option for me.
I've never had any problems with my website loading because I have a good web host and I stay on top of my plugin updates. One of the plugins that's really contributed to the speed of my site is WP Rocket, which really lives up to its name. So let's talk about a few of the frustrations that I've had with this site. Well, initially I decided to use Buddy Boss as the theme and plugin that allows me to control the community aspects on my website. I wanted there to be a community on my website where people can upload photos and share and ask questions because a lot of my courses are photography based. I had a lot of problems out of the gate with Buddy Boss. I've installed thousands of plugins over the course of two decades of using WordPress and Buddy Boss gave me a real hard time at the beginning of using this system. After a few software updates that they said in support tickets wasn't part of the problem that I was experiencing, I finally was able to get Buddy Boss working. But if I had been within the 30 day window that I had purchased their system, I would have asked for a refund and never looked back. However, since then, my experiences have been relatively good. I have not had any issues with the compatibility of their plugin. Everything seems to work fine as advertised. Now, video hosting is where I've recently ran into an issue. VideoPress is a service from WordPress and Jetpack, and that requires a subscription. At the time I signed up, it was $120 a year for two terabytes of storage, which I think is a lot. I didn't even use up a third of that with all the courses being 4K video that I've uploaded. I believe though that they've changed their structure to one terabyte for $120, which I still believe is pretty fair pricing, but I haven't been able to find an option to increase that beyond one terabyte of storage. Now, VideoPress connects through the Jetpack plugin, and on occasion, I have had the Jetpack plugin come unconnected from my website. Now, usually there's a notification that pops up that says, hey, we noticed that your website moved. Do you want to move it to this new URL? And I could cancel that. I think the problem occurs when my system takes a backup and then that backup has a chance to actually live before it's just put in storage. And when that takes place, the Jetpack plugin may be getting confused. That's just my speculation. But that tends to happen maybe once every four or five months and probably won't happen for most people. But this last time the Jetpack plugin became disconnected and that made it impossible for me to upload video to my website. On top of that, it also marked all of my videos as private, which meant none of my students or anybody could even view any of the videos that were on the website. And I reached out to WordPress slash Jetpack support. It took them a few days to respond to me. And then it took them four days, almost five full days to respond before I was finally able to start working on getting this fixed. On the sixth day, I was finally able to get the videos back up. Now to me, if a company as big as WordPress or Automatic that owns WordPress, Jetpack, WooCommerce, and all of these different platforms, if they're not willing to support their services that they're charging money for, I can't trust those services. And so I was looking at alternate options for my video hosting. The first one that came to mind is Vimeo. But that's going to cost me around six or seven hundred dollars a year for the amount of storage that I would need. That's pretty expensive. And I might as well move over to an all in one system if it's going to cost me that much. But as of right now, VideoPress is working fine. Everything is back up and I'm not having any more issues with this site. So if I had to do it all over again, would I build my site in WordPress again? Without a doubt, yes. My main website would be built in WordPress as well as the course sales pages because I can create a lot of content, I can optimize that for SEO, and I'm going to have a better chance of that content ranking in the search engines because I have more control over the pages that I could put in my website. I also have more control over the design and layout of those pages, as well as dynamic content that I could add to them to make those pages pop and more interesting to the viewer. But I think there's something to be said for these hosted LMS platforms like Teachable, Podia, they are very easy to use and set up. And all of the aspects of managing the e-commerce and the course LMS system is on somebody else and you have support, somebody that you can contact. And all of these services have great customer support. So if I was going to do it again, I would build my website in WordPress with my sales pages and all of that content there. And then the courses would link to a third party system like Podia. I've actually been testing Podia over the last couple of weeks after experiencing this video press issue. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be notified because I'll definitely share my experiences and what decision I made ultimately to move forward with my site. If you're new to WordPress and you want to learn more about it, I have two courses for you. I have a getting started guide for WordPress and I also have an Elementor getting started guide as well. These courses are free and they'll help you understand and learn more about WordPress. 
In the future, I will be putting together a course on how to build out your own course website using tools like LearnDash because it really does give you the ultimate control over your students' experience. And no other platform so far seems to offer that level of granularity. Make sure to check out the links in the description below to all the plugins and different tools that I mentioned as I was walking through my website. If you have any questions about those, make sure to ask questions down in the comment section. We'll see you in the next video.